David Dobrik, the absolute king of YouTube, who I actually only discovered like a few weeks ago, but when I did, I went down the biggest rabbit hole, hundreds of videos deep, because I was fascinated with how he makes content. His storytelling is enamoring. It, it, it captivates you. It makes you want to learn more, and it makes you feel like he's your friend. But there's something behind what he's doing that makes him and the vlog squad constantly go viral. And I want to break that down because well, this channel is all about storytelling and how people can engineer really great stories. So let's dive in with the eight tips that I think, well, he's master. So tip number one is no fluff. David Dobrik is amazing at removing context while still keeping interest in the viewership that he has. And when I say no fluff, what I mean by that is David and his friends all started as Viners. They were people who understood what it was like to, in very short clips, make comedic bits. And comedic timing is the backbone of David's content. It, he's always looking to make you laugh and to make you smile and really feel like what he's doing is outrageous or interesting in so many different ways. But the way he films his videos, even though they're all four minutes and 21 seconds, are in these short bit-like formats. And you hear him reference that in some of his videos. So what that means is he switches from scene to scene with no context, no telling you, oh, I'm gonna go to my friend's house to go and do this thing. Just straight to the point, straight to the laughs, straight to the highlights that feel like when you're watching his content, you're listening to a riser. Kind of like the riser that's in his intro music. Which leads to the second point, four minutes and 21 seconds. Why? In fact, on YouTube for the longest time, videos that were over 10 minutes did better. Why? Because they had an extra ad break and therefore YouTube wanted to monetize more and rewarded videos that had longer watch times, had longer length and had 10 minutes or more because they could put more ads in it. But he forgets all of that. He says, forget what is best for the platform, forget what is best for monetization and instead focuses on what is the best story that he can sustainably and creatively make on a regular basis. And what that looks like is funny bits strung together in a four minute and 21 second masterpiece that he makes each and every time. Now, his videos are constantly one-upping themselves. There's no kind of beginning, middle, and end. They really just kind of follow the same format, but they do have some consistent elements. Intro music, some of the music choices they have, which I'll talk about later, as well as he always ends with some kind of character building joke, something that provides context and makes you watch all the way till the last second. And that in the new format of YouTube, where engagement is seen as the most important element, as well as click-through rate, which we learned about in the thumbnail videos that we spoke about, that crushes and it does so well. And in fact, at least tip number three, not only does this format do well on YouTube, which is where I've discovered him, but it actually lends to so many of the other social media platforms because each one of his bits, whether they be 10 seconds or 30 seconds long or a minute long, actually make the perfect content for Instagram or TikTok where he's now crushing it. I mean, you can see some of his old bits turning into TikTok content and going viral all over again to a new audience that might not have yet discovered David or allowing his existing audience to relive that moment without having to watch the whole video and go through the archives that is his YouTube. His content is so- Completely out of this world. Look at this shit. Fucking nuts. That's so nuts. No, sorry, sorry. I mean this guy. Look at this fucking alien. <laughs> so goddamn good. That it makes for a better and better engaging ecosystem for his entire brand on every social media platform. And, uh, and that's not easy. So the reason number four is David Dobrik emulates some of the most successful sitcoms on the planet. They're comedic, but they focus on a group of friends. And the truth is that David Dobrik's vlogs are not about him. They're actually about his experience dealing with and making jokes with and living life with his friends. And it's of no surprise that he takes inspiration from the show that is incredibly popular and well overpaid on Netflix that is Friends. And what's amazing about that is on YouTube, a platform that's all about kind of you, the attractive character, he makes it about the attractive characters in his life and how he surrounds himself and builds those characters up. And as those characters build, they gain traction and clout. They make their own videos that have a different style and they all cross pollinate. The bits that are found in Jason and Nash's vlogs or in Jonah's vlogs 
kind of lend to the content that he is creating and it creates a web where you can discover each of these characters and build them all up, empowering each and every one of his friends. Now, the format of putting the emphasis on other people, no fancy gimbals, no fancy equipment, just real life interaction. He opens the doors to very good collaborations with existing stars. I mean, you've seen him bring on people like Madison Beer, who has done well on Instagram and TikTok. You've seen him bring on uh, Charlie D'Amelio, who's crushing it on TikTok, but you've also seen him bring on mega stars like Justin Bieber. And because he always emphasizes in his existing content, those other characters, it's so natural for him to integrate any new character at any one moment, making it, well, viral. And so all of that makes his content co-hostable. It can follow the journey of any single character, whether they're already part of the vlog squad or somebody new who's looking to promote their new song like Justin Bieber was, for example. So the next tip is that that whole format leads to very good opportunities for recurring jokes. By having recurring characters who you get to know over time, by having videos that are coming out very consistently, you can make jokes that span more than the time limit of a specific video. Jokes like when Alex constantly puts his foot through a table and, and he breaks down those Ikea tables. Or jokes about the Antonians who are just a hilarious group of people. Jokes of people like Josh Peck and making references to Drake and Josh. And even multi-year jokes like ruining somebody's birthday. Now what I love about David Dobrik is that he's clearly not money hungry. And it's not because he's not making bank making his videos. And it's the fact that he uses copyrighted music. He always champions the best way to tell the story. And he recognizes that if we recognize a song, if we have an affinity for a song that fits the context of the bit and fits the context of the moment, he will always use it. And that has power. We recognize these songs and it makes us feel familiar with him. It almost makes us feel like we're friends. And his vlog is so good at that. There's very few YouTubers that you can that you can really feel like you know on a deep level and if you were to meet him on the street, that they would be very similar to what you see on camera. And, well, that's awesome. Now the before last tip is good planning. All his content is reaction-based content. Facial expressions, laughter, fun, excitement, fear, pain, whatever it is. David doesn't just think about what a good bit might be and see the entire joke through. He actually creates these high tension moments where he doesn't really know what's gonna happen, but he knows that the potential for high impact, for big reactions, for big laughs, or lots of pain, or all kinds of surprise faces is in just putting people in the right context, turning on the camera, and waiting to see what's gonna happen. He builds those moments and he definitely plans them. He definitely understands that they have potential to be great, and he only shows you the ones that do really well. Again, cutting all the fluff. Which leads to my last point. The most infectious component of why David Dobrik is just so phenomenal is that everything is about a laugh. <laughs> it's all about making you feel good. It's all about getting a reaction. And there's not a single creator out there that I know that is all about showing laughter and not just the joke, literally people reacting and laughing to the joke. I mean, you can count the number of seconds in any one of his vlogs and the amount of time that people are laughing and, and kicking back and just having a great time is uncanny. And by showing that it, it's, it's infectious, you want to hang out with him, you are literally laughing along with him. And it's different than how stand-up comedy works because that is a story that is meant to design other people to laugh, but isn't about the person who's on stage laughing. And I think that's what is unique about David and his friends is that they're laughing at their own joke. And it is by far the most important driving force behind his viral success. And well, David, I'd love to be your friend and laugh along with you.